Hi and welcome to Jessie Jane's Beads. My name is Gem Hawks and I'm here with you today to talk jewellery making. So here at Jessie Jane's Beads we have the world's most fabulous collection of beads and today's choice is my choice. It's Dogwood Blooms, an absolutely fantastic mega collection of gorgeous spring feel kind of beads you know the sort of thing that makes you truly believe that the change in weather is just around the corner so i'm going to pop you down to have a look at our project i'll take you through the beads in just a moment and make sure that you can see all of those lovely lovely beads that we're going to be working with today i also want to chat to you briefly if i may let's just have a look at these gorgeous little babies i'm just trying to see if facebook's going to cooperate today ah it looks like we have company sheree has joined us hello and welcome i hope you're having a lovely lovely day today thank you for hanging out can't actually see all of the comments oh there is Anne. Anne has joined us hello sweet pea how are you i hope that you guys are well let's just have a quick gander at our project today so i've added in some rose gold color heart chain and i've also made this cute little quirky butterfly which is what we're going to work on together today Cherie says Oregon is beautiful today. Hazel has joined us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's really, really cold where I am today. I'm slap bang in the middle of England, north of Oxford, south of Birmingham. So I hope that you are all enjoying some beautiful, beautiful weather. It's very, very cold here. My fingers haven't quite warmed up for the day. So um, fingers very much crossed that they will actually do what they're supposed to do so what have you been up to today Cherie says it's pretty thank you so much my love Celia has joined us from a damp Lancashire yeah it's not exactly tutti frutti springtime blooms here just yet either although the cherry blossom is starting to come in and that always makes me very very happy I'm going to show you my choice of bead mix for today which is from the recently launched sort of springtime-ish collection i've popped a link to dogwood blooms but if you go to our main page at jessiejamesbeads.com you'll see all of the new in and there's lots of wonderful spring feeling going on there donna says hello hello my darling how are you today i hope that you're having a cracking day as we say here so i want to show you around dogwood blooms but i also want to show you just a handful I'm not going to unwrap them all, but just a handful of other beads from our collection today. Cherie is tending garden today. Congratulations, mine's a bit of a quagmire. So bunny basket. I'm not going to unwrap them all because I want to work on our technique today. But isn't that pretty? What beautiful, feisty spring florals you've got in there. And if I flip that over, you'll see that there is indeed a bunny. I um, have a bit of a thing for springtime hairs. So there's one of my favourites from the collection. There's Bunny Basket to look at. Spring Song. Wow, wow, wow. And now I love working with mixed metals. And in this blend, you've got a couple of different tones in those charms and metals. You've got quite a glitzy gold, but you've also got this more antiqued muted metal with that gorgeous bird design there. Cherie says gorgeous beads. They really, really are. I'm going to show you Dogwood Blooms in a moment. It's my absolute fave. Lavender Lemonade. Now, I love lavender. Quite fond of lemonade as well. And you can see that there's some of those hexagonal beads in this one, which is so among my favourite Jesse James beads beads. It sounds like I'm saying things too many times. You've also got these sparkly blue beads in the lavender lemonade. And they look for all the world like sea glass. Now, if you'll excuse the rustling for just a moment, I do want to share this one with you. I'm not working with it today, but I just want you to see the beauty that we have available at Jesse James Beads right now. So this is called Hyacinth. More of those hexagonal beads, but also, oh my gosh, can you see these large whole glass beads with those florals inside? They are absolutely stunning absolutely gorgeous so that's hyacinth just a quick look at some of the other bits and bobs that we have available in our relatively new uploads in terms of what we're working with today 
Gosh, Anne says it's 90 degrees in California right now. 32 degrees centigrade. Thank you for the translation. It does help. Not feeling very well. Have a cold. No COVID tested negative. Um, well, hopefully you will soon feel better and the sunshine will give you some joy. Cherie says, love those girly beads, spring sunshine. Absolutely, I agree. Melanie says, hello, gorgeous, been way too long. Hope life has been treating you well. Thank you, my darling. I got to go and hang out in the big smoke last week and uh, went to the National Gallery and saw some art that I've wanted to see for a very, very long time. So let's talk dogwood blooms. Not only is it a lovely collection, but oh my gosh, look at the pretty artwork on the label there. I'm a sucker for these things. Now, what struck me initially about this bead mix was how every single colour just blends beautifully with every other single bead. Right from the very, very glitzy and glittery clay rhinestone encrusted beads through to these large pear drops, you've got two of these absolutely fantastic enamel butterflies you also get two each of the the ivory flower and two of the rose colored flowers well i'm going to show you those a little bit more closely in a moment but you've got two of these gorgeous butterflies as well anvil pennsylvania is where nancy's calling from thank you for coming in today teresa is in tampa where it's a balmy 26 degrees centigrade that's absolutely perfect that's my uh, living and working dream temperature these are such fun fan shaped facets absolutely gorgeous almost uh the color of an imperial topaz but with a little bit of extra because they've got that demi coating on them we have got huge beautiful rose colored bicones there's these fabulous very highly faceted barrel shaped beads now they're gorgeous that's an instant earring without too much trouble whatsoever i'm a sucker also for ceramics ceramics and glasses in my bead mix is always a win so we've got some beautiful ceramics with that gorgeous mottled effect over the top so much more besides we've also got some ridged pearls in here we have got some slightly smaller beads in a lovely muted sort of a oh gosh i don't know it's almost like ivory but milky ivory it's beautiful really pretty kim says hello gem i find myself saying bits and bobs i love it you're such a gem here in california watching from my comfortable and cozy bed good morning to you sweetheart i hope you're having a beautiful day enjoy a restful one aloha to bonnie jean who is saying good morning from hawaii i guess it must be quite early in hawaii yet beautiful metallic there now my eyes are not what they once were but it looks like some kind of fauna it could be teeny tiny butterflies on the surface of that metallic spacer so much more besides now in addition to what i've shown you briefly from this box which is dogwood blooms that's what we're working with today i also withdrew some other pieces to work with so i'm going to show you those a little bit more closely now as well so you get two each of the ivory and that rose coloured enamelled flower. These are stunning. Pop them directly onto an earring hook and you have instant, pretty, beautiful jewellery with almost zero effort. Two Towers calling in from Houston in Texas. Hello, my darling. How are you? I hope you're having a beautiful day, sweet pea. So we have these lovely florals, which we're going to be working with today. We have these absolutely astonishing multi-faceted pink round beads. These must be eight millimetre. I would say they're quite large anyway. We'll work with those among some of my favourite things ever. Feathers and leaves. I do love a little bit of nature in my jewellery. So I'm going to be working with two of those. You get four in the Dogwood Blooms mix. So it's a very generous mix. I've also just withdrawn a couple of bead caps, which I didn't show you earlier on, because I knew I would have the opportunity to do so now. So it's quite a nice soft gold on these. Really lovely colourway. And I've also got some little jump rings there, as well as a length of chain. Now, I adore hearts. So I've chosen to work with some rose gold colourway heart chain, all from Jesse James Beads. 
Linda, hello to you watching from East Palatka in Florida. Sunny and warm here today. Took a break from cleaning the pool to watch you. Welcome and thank you for taking that break. We appreciate that. This is the project we're going to work together towards making today. Now, I probably won't show you the feathers or the flowers because all it is is opening and closing a jump ring. Primarily, I want to share with you this cute little butterfly today. So I'm going to just scooch the project up to the top of the board and just allow that to sit into vision as easily as possible. She says, absolutely causing catastrophic failure of display. Let's just scooch that up to the top. That's what we're going to work together today. So we're using my two favourite wire gauges today, which is 18 gauge. I'm working with artistic wire today, which is a, a semi hard wire. You can equally work with German style, soft, raw or even quite hard wires. It really genuinely doesn't matter. What we're going to do is just scooch that one out of the way so I don't knock it flying. I have around about 11 or so inches of that 18 gauge round and I'm going to grip hold of one end and just get that warmed through whilst I say good morning to Paula who's also calling in from Houston in Texas. Do you know Two Tau? Two Tau's just down the road from you my love. So I'm just running that between thumb and forefinger like so and just warming that wire through and what this does is it allows a little more flexibility whilst we're working and after we allow our jewellery to sit once we've finished creating when it starts to cool down it will cool down to be just slightly harder than before we started working it so there's two reasons we're making it easier on ourselves whilst we're designing but we're also making the jewellery a little bit more hard wearing later on without needing to go too gung ho with a hammer and a block if you don't wish to. I will show you an alternative form of hardening. When you're making a charm like this, you can use this, uh, use this rather as a pendant or as earrings or whatever you really want to as decor. Uh, but it does pay to give it just a little bit of work hardening because it might just catch on things. I think they're adorable. It is a fairly artistic, broad license that I've applied. It's not really very butterfly-y, but you can make it look more like a real butterfly if you want to. So I'm going to find the centre point of that approximately 10 or 11 inches of wire. Again, it's 18 gauge round. And at that centre point, I'm going to bring the wire back around on itself so that I get a really smart fold. Now at the moment that's not much of a smart fold but don't worry about that for now. What we're going to do is give that a little bit of a nip up with those pliers just to close it slightly but not completely. Like so. Just so that I know that I've got a good little racetrack or a little hairpin down at the base there. Now the first distance that we want to worry about is the length of the body to the bottom of the, f the the lower of the two wings we're going to create. So if I pop my pliers up inside that little hairpin, I'm going to draw the right hand wire or the uppermost wire as you're looking at it off to one side. Then I'm going to switch out to hold the other side and try to keep these two bends opposite each other so we have a sense of symmetry. So once you've opened that wire out, I think I've made the body a little bit too long, but I'm not going to overly worry. I can just make the wings ever so slightly smaller. The more you practice this design, the better it gets, honestly. So we've got the lower body of our little winged beastie. I'm going to call it a butterfly. And what we ha want to do now is make sure that this is nice and flat and straight before we really, really crunch that up quite firmly. Now I'm just using my bent chain nose pliers, but any flat facing pliers will do. What I'm going to do is hold that in the pliers at a little bit of an angle so it doesn't go completely opposite to the direction of the pliers. It's going in sort of at about 45 degrees. This enables me to catch more of the body of the butterfly in the flat surface of those pliers. And then I'm going to very, very gently in small movements start to make that flat and we're doing a really really hard fold here so the more you do it the closer that will get to be and it will look like one piece of wire from a distance so once I'm happy that I've got a good straight 
piece of uh, body, lower, I don't know what the part of a butterfly is called. What you might notice is that one side of my butterfly's wing has come up slightly. Now that can happen because we're closing up this little gap down at the bottom. At this stage, because we warmed that wire, let me flip that over. What I'm going to do is just reopen that angle ever so slightly. And with any luck, you'll be able to see that what is now the right hand side is just a little bit higher up. So what I'm going to do is adjust that ever so slightly, very, very easily. And it really does just take a tiny movement. And now that's completely set, centralized and symmetrical. Whoops. So what I am going to do now is make sure that it's all completely flat and all completely closed up. So I want that to appear to all intents and purposes as if it's just a single piece of wire. So I am going to apply quite a lot of pressure between the two sides of the pliers. If you struggle with applying that pressure, if you have sore wrists or the such, you can use your workbench to help you. So we want to squash that down now. Well, I'm going to just support the design in my hand and show you what I mean. I'm pressing one side of the pliers against the desk and using my hand on the other side, just supporting with my fingers, making the camera waddle, wobble. It's called an abdomen, says Anne. Thank you for that, appreciate it. So I'm crushing down now and that has really flattened down the tail end of the abdomen. Thank you, Anne, for your Lepidoptera knowledge. So what we're going to do now is decide what kind of shape we want the lower wings to be. Now, they can be rounded. They can be quite angular. You can go and look online at images of whatever butterfly takes your fancy. I adore swallowtail butterflies. So all you would need to do is try to keep them reasonably symmetrical. And in order to do that, what I tend to do is if I apply a move on one side, so I've brought the angle down a little bit more steeply, I will flip it over. Because it doesn't have a top or a bottom, it is the same from underneath and on top. It's so cold here, my rings are spinning. That's why it looks a bit funny. So every time I do something on one side of the design, I'm going to grip with the pliers on the other side and bring that down to match. And in that way, I have this sense of symmetry and I also don't get too lost. It's very easy to forget where you did a left turn, where you did a right turn, how much you bent the wire by. So a little bit of warmth just on the next section. And what I'm going to do is to grip on one side of the wings there and just push up a little bit. And what you can do is you can generate quite hard bends using your pliers to begin with, like so. If you want that to be a little bit softer later on, you can absolutely soften it out. So if you can see, it's quite a hard angle on this side, a slightly softer angle on this side. So in order to make that angle a little bit softer, I'm just going to pop my pliers in. Teresa asks, could you carefully hammer the abdomen to flatten it? You absolutely can. What I would say is let's make the entire butterfly first and then I'll drop in a block and hammer if you don't mind muting your microphones for two shakes I'll show you how you can hammer the whole thing because then you know that everything is exactly where you want it to be so let's make the next angle change I've got the lower wings set size wise so I'm just going to play around with these you could make them diamond shape what I might do is be a rebel and go for two angle changes on this side and I'm just going to fold that wire down back towards meeting where it first comes away from that abdomen or that center line. Now I'm not going to hammer it in that position. It's just a really good idea to get it as close to that abdomen line as possible. So let's pop those pliers in and push the wire back out and away. Now before we go any further what we're going to do is flip the design over, you can rotate that around and try to match as close as possibly what we have already done on the one side. So I can see already that there is a little disparity between those two sides. You could put marks on your pliers if you wanted to record the exact distance or you could actually measure them if you wanted to. I'm not very good at measuring things. I do tend to do a lot of estimates. Or as I like to say in my kitchen, guesstimates. I guess and then I throw the stuff in the bowl and then I mix it all together and either it works or it doesn't. So that looks fairly reasonably estimated to be similar doesn't have to be exactly the same but if you want it to be you can measure it so I can see when I bring that down that that looks okay it's not awful what you could do if you wanted to is to create one side pop it onto a piece of paper 
draw an image around it and then match it on the other side. It depends on your level of accuracy that you require in this piece. So I've brought the wire back towards that center line. I'll grip that tail of wire now and turn it back out so that I then have that symmetry once more. So that looks reasonably symmetrical to me. You, as I say, can take much more time to make it much more symmetrical if you'd like to. I feel that I need to just tweak that very, very slightly just to get a little bit better symmetry. And what we're going to do now is to bring the same level of tightness that we generated down here at the bottom of the abdomen, at the very end of the tail. And I'm just going to pinch these two quite soft racetracks into position now. Let me tell you a little tale of warning, a little word of warning. What I almost did then was to pinch that wire, that racetrack section together with my finger underneath. Now you can see that the tips of my pliers do leave little divots in my finger. It doesn't matter, that will go away in a second. Believe you me, if you do squish that together and you pinch the tip of your finger with those pliers, it really hurts. So what you can do is flip that up the other way and squish like so and in that way your fingertips will love you much much more so you can see we've closed that up really quite tightly without damaging our fingers good afternoon to everyone from danielle in cloudy pa hello my darling how are you so i'm going to as i said earlier just flip the design over because it helps me to work in a particular side i bit funny like that I struggle to uh, interpret it with my brain going in the other direction ah Anne says been there done that <laughs> and Margaret has sent a big red heart absolutely better a big red heart than a big throbbing fingertip what can happen when you're squishing a, a race track hairpin into position is that it will flip up like this one has if that happens to you all you need to do is just carefully instruct the wire to return to that straight position and then you can have another go, just nice and gently, slowly, slowly, and you will get there. So I feel like I want to close this side up again a little bit more. The reason I flip it over is because I can control the two ends of the wire. So I'm supporting either side of the loop that we're squishing. Whilst I squish that loop, if you control that, it's much less likely to flip. It may still do that. So you can see here, there's minor differences in those lower wings. So again, you can spend a little bit more time getting those angles as sharp or however you want them to be. You, you know, it's your butterfly. You can play with that to your heart's content. So what I'm going to do, because my wires with that have got the loose ends, they're coming up at an angle. And actually I'd quite like them to be a little bit more straight. So in order to achieve that, what I want to do is draw those lower wings out a bit. So I'll try and do that without flipping it one more time. There we go. So that means that I now have my two loose wires. They're coming away at the three o'clock position and the nine o'clock position on my clock face. And that for, well, when I'm designing butterflies, it just helps me to get everything exactly how I want to be able to see it, helps me to visualize a little bit more. Now I like the upper wings on my butterfly to be slightly larger. So let's just grab hold of that for a second. Let's have a look. Debbie says, hi everyone, sorry I'm late. My notifications don't work. I have I missed much? We're working with Dogwood Blooms. You will be able to rewatch from the beginning on replay it's going to be here forever and it will go on to the blog and to youtube later so don't fret you can catch up i'm working in 18 gauge wire whilst i grip hold of the butterfly what i want is to have the next angle change take part take part rather past the point of that lower wing i want my upper wing to be larger so if i just put my hand in a funny position and just push that wire upwards you'll see what i mean so I'll do the same on the other side. It's really weird for me to not just flip it over and do it exactly the same on the same side. I'm trying to be more inclusive, but um, yeah, my brain doesn't always work. So there's that. So we've got two wires now coming away at funny angles and you can decide if you want a diamond shaped wing or if you want a nice smooth rounded wing, whichever you want to work with. 
So this is JJB Boutique Collection. Oh, yes, they are beautiful. In case you missed it, at the head of tonight's show, I did show a couple of strands from the rest of this collection. There was Bunny Basket, Lavender Lemonade. Let's have a look. This absolute beauty spring song was shown. And we also had a quick look at Hyacinth. Oh, my gosh, so pretty. Really, really lovely collection. I'll just show you the rest of Dogwood Blooms real quick, actually, because it is a real treat. Look at these. Gorgeous, gorgeous beasties. Absolutely beautiful. So let's make those upper wings, shall we? I'm just going to turn the butterfly onto its side because it's easier for me to show you. I'm going to go for a slightly diamond-shaped wing up at the top here. So I'm going to bring the wire back. So I've got this quite angular end section and then bring that wire back down to that central body part, that central abdomen part. Now, if I grip hold of that wire at the central point, I'm going to push the wire back upwards. That's going to be <laughs> That quite often happens to me. Let's just open that up and close it back down in the correct position. Now we need to replicate this on the second side. I do have to flip the design over for this. So you can see the butterfly I'm making now live with you is ever so slightly more angular. I softened the angles on this one because I wanted to see a little bit of choices, a little bit of options. You can obviously be really, really fanciful with these lower wings. If you want to check out, go to your favourite search engine and have a look up Swallowtail butterflies. They are some of the most exquisite creatures on this planet. Really, really pretty. So let's push the wire back up and inwards to generate that diamond kind of shape. I think that might be slightly too long. If it's too long, I can just very gently move that curve on a little bit. And then we need to bring that wire back down to the central point. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you may have missed it. You can do just one side of your butterfly and then draw it onto a sheet and match that by hand. It's entirely up to you. So let's grip that wire that we have just crossing over the central point and push that all the way back up to the top. What I'm looking for for these two central wires now is for them to be side by side. They need to be coming back into that central area at the same kind of height on the design. And I want them to meet at the same level as well. So if I pop that down, this is one of the reasons I keep straight lines on my boards. It really is helpful in designing to have access to that. And also it's slightly prettier than plain sh white sheet of paper for you. I'm now going to trim away some of the excess wire. We started with around about 11 or so inches. I want to have a good two inch length up here at the top. Just to begin with, I'm going to trim away those excesses. It gives me an opportunity to ensure that I have nice, smooth, flush cuts on the ends. And also you can decide whether you want quite large coils up at the top or if you want quite diminutive ones. They don't have to be closed coils, but I'm going to show you with a closed coil now. I'm just separating those out very, very gently before I jump on in with the very tip of my round nose pliers, rotate that around and around. So I'm going to start off with slightly open coil on one side. Ideally, it would be best if I could recreate that uh, so that we get that sense of symmetry. But, you know, you're not a machine, you're a human being and you're allowed to have slightly obscure, slightly different, slightly asymmetric designs if you wish. So what I'm going to do now is just start to coil that around ever so slightly. And we still need to end up with a bit of a gap up here at the top. Now the gap that you have there, it's whatever you want it to be. It can be a small gap or a large gap. You do need to have an amount of wire here that is free for us to wire everything together with that lighter gauge. So we've started with our approximately 11 inches or so of that 18 gauge round wire. If you wanted to hammer, and I'm not going to go very, very hard with this. I have a very, very tiny little toffee hammer that I can use on air. Um, but if you have your sounds turned up and there are small children nearby, maybe you, you want to just turn me down ever so gently for a second. Are you ready? Sylvia says, I raise monarchs and swallowtails. I love this. Oh my gosh. Please, please, please send me photos later. Are you ready? Hammering time. <laughs> now, 
Now, when I say gently hammer, I do mean gently hammer. If you want to, you can absolutely smash this senseless, but be careful around those points where we've tightened up the wire. Because it's already seen quite a lot of work going on, you perhaps don't want to hammer it really, really hard. So a gentle tap, ready? will certainly help your design stay in shape. Now, when you're hammering a wire 2D form like this, you need to make sure that it is completely flat, completely 2D. If you have one layer of wire crossing over another wire and you then strike it with a hammer, you will weaken the design and it may just fall apart. So make sure that everything is in two dimensions as if you've created it between two panes of glass and then support the remainder of the design whilst you hammer section by section. So I quite often use a bezel on chasing hammer, which is perfect for a piece like this because it covers quite a lot at a time. However, when I'm doing live broadcast, I prefer to use a small toffee hammer. Because it's slightly gentler on your ears, I also use a little mini block from our friends at Impress Art. I think that's quite enough of that. Let's pop that back in the box. So just a very gentle amount of hammering will really change your design and give it a lot more rigidity. What we're going to do now is find a scrap length of 26 gauge. This is around about 12 inches. It's just what I had on my desk and it's far more than we will need. What we want to do is to wind onto one of those sides. So if you can gently prise that apart, please be gentle, especially now you've hammered it. If you are not gentle with this, you might find that you cause a fracture. If it helps you, you can open that sort of a little bit more like so, just so that you don't cause any issues. What I'm going to do is a very, very simple three and three figure of eight or basket weave. So I'm just going to grab that wire and rotate it three times around one side. And then what I will do, just for the sake of expediency, is just trim this away. What you can do when you're working at home uh, by yourself is instead of trimming any away and wasting, um, you can just make sure that you use every last little bit. But I'm going to trim that excess away just because I want to show you the weave and not spend time faffing around getting that super neat and tidy. So I've wrapped three times around one of those antenna, I want to say. I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and smooth before I go any further forwards. So just give that a very, very gentle squish. And then I'm going to push that all the way down to where it meets the upper of those two wings. Now, my little coil of wire has gone all the way around the what's on your screen is the upper of our two antenna. And the wire has come underneath that upper wire. So what I want to do is take it over the top of the lower wire. The collection I'm using right now, Debbie, is Dogwood Blooms. Dogwood Blooms. In the video description, I popped a link to this exact blend, this mega, mega, mega fabulous bead mix. There is a link directly in the video that you can go straight to. However, Danielle has also given you a link to lots of our beautiful new in boutique collection. So with your figure of eight weave, what we're doing is we're tying one antenna to the other antenna and we're looking to wrap three times around one side and then switch directions. So I've gone all the way around. My wire has come up the centre, so I want to take it over the top of my lower antenna. One, just slipping that up the centre there and that's three wraps, bringing the wire back up the middle. If you're a knitter or a crochet artist, this will probably be quite familiar to you. It's almost a little bit like um, regular weaving. So I now want to take the wire back around the upper of those two antenna three times. That's one, that's two, that's three. Bring the wire back to the up position. And then I'm going to wrap three times around the lower antenna, always returning my wire to the up position between those two antenna. Now you might see that one of those antennas just grown slightly. If I give that a bit of a poke, it will sit back down into position. I've just done 
two wraps on either side at the moment. Now I feel like I want to do at least three wraps on this one and then I'll show you some design options. So I've gone for a third set on the upper antenna, let's just get that in light properly, that's better, and then three wraps on the lower antenna. Now that is enough to secure the two halves of the design together. If I flip that over to the far side, I'm going to trim away just past the point where the wire comes over the top and I've still got a good seven inches of wire left to use. So we always have little scraps of wire hanging around ready for such instances. I'm going to take that last tiny bit of cut wire and just feed that so that it sits down between those two antenna as flat as possible. Get that nice and neat and tidy and then just give it a very gentle squish. Now the piece that I popped onto my charm bracelet, I've just used a jump ring into the charm through one of those coils at the top of the antenna. What you can do is you can play around with how you want this to appear. You can reopen these up and trim them if you wish to, or you can open them out slightly. Now because we warmed this wire, gosh it wasn't even 20, 25 minutes ago, it's still flexible enough for me to just open that out. So our lovely friend uh, Sylvia who raises monarchs and swallowtails would know much better than I what these babies look like. I am just doing the artistic impression. Let me just get that last little sticky up bit of wire and get it to sit down neatly or it will... Oh, I was going to make a pun. It will bug me. Ha! <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. There we go. So this one looks different to the first one that I made, but I like that. I like to be able to have different design ideas. If you feel that having them splayed apart like so would be a hazard and that they might come undone, then you can just tighten those up slightly however you want to use that. Now the flowers that I added, let me just clear my board a bit. There's some dust and stuff on it. Let's get this charm bracelet back onto the centre of the board. Now I used one of the rose coloured enamel charms, one of the ivory coloured enamel charms. I used these two, they could be leaves, they could be feathers, you can decide. Thank you very much Emily, that's very kind of you. I'll just show you quickly how you can make one of these little charms as well. It's really handy to be able to make a charm with nothing more than a bead and a bead cap. I'm going to grab some of that 18 gauge wire. I'm going to trim away probably about three, three and a half to four inches, like so. Then we're going to use some round nose pliers and create a small coil. So I'm going to coil this around with those round nose pliers to begin with, just getting that round form. Once I've got a nice round form, I'm going to make sure that it's flat. If it needs to be made smaller, you can just pinch that, but very, very gently. Going to take that around that central aperture so that I've got two coils, one and two. And then what I need to do is to grip from underneath like so, hold across the wire, then I'm going to push that coil so that it sits away, a little bit like a lollipop. Tiny bit of warmth and heat into the design. So I've got two coils there. Let's add on one of those absolutely fantastic beautiful rose coloured multi-faceted, it's a multi-splendid thing, this is beautiful. And what did I do with that little bead cap? Really lovely soft gold on these bead caps, be great if I could pick them up. <laughs> so this again is something that you can do with your scraps of wire. Jessica has joined us, huggles to you my darling, how are you? I hope you are well. So up at the top of a charm like this I'm just going to go for a very simple loop. So I grip the wire as it comes out the top of that bead cap with just a tiny, tiny gap. And then I turn that away from me, draw that tail of wire around, and then you can swoosh that all the way back. Didn't even warm this wire. Naughty, naughty. It's always better to warm it. And then we will trim that away. Let's pop that back out of the way. And then what we do need to do is make sure that that cut end closes back up to that little angle change at the top of the bead cap. What I also like to do once I've assembled my charm, and it's very simple, very simple indeed, 
is give that a really hearty squish. Now the reason that I'm squishing the wire really firmly, I'm actually just changing the profile of it slightly. It's 18 gauge, my darling. It's the same as we made the butterfly with. 18 gauge wire you can make almost anything with. It's fabulous. And is sending huggles to everyone as well. I am giving this a really hearty squish because I want it to be good and strong. So that will just open and close onto your charm wire, what your charm chain rather. You're going to open that exactly the same way as you would a jump ring. So that you've got that beautiful aperture to work with. I'm just going to pop this on the end actually. I might make this into a necklace of some description. And then you will close it in exactly the same way. So you can see there that that's open just like a jump ring would be and then we're going to close that back up to its original position if you find that there's a gap we don't want there to be a gap at all so you can grip hold push that into position once it's all sitting exactly how you want it to give that another good squish and you've got a lovely charm on your charm chain just an example for you and then to add your butterfly in let me find one of those little jump rings now these are what i call emergency jump rings i didn't have any in the right colored wire where's my other chain nose pliers so they're emergency jump rings they're a bit a bit dirty i've just wrapped them around a bale making plier to make some circles and then cut them <laughs> so all we would do to add your butterfly on is to loop through one of those antenna and that's another reason for giving that a little bit of a hammer making them nice and strong and then you can add that through one of those loops as well close your jump ring back up i am not a chain mail artist my good friend fleur is she's incredible chain mail I can do like two basic weaves that's it so there you add on your butterfly to your charm and if you basically rinse and repeat what you should end up with is something a little bit like this I actually really like the butterfly we made together today that's really cute so I have worked with today let's get the box dogwood blooms jesse james beads let me just show you if you've not seen this mix before a quick hint have you seen these now our friend sylvia could probably tell me what these are they're so pretty you get two of those in the mix you get four of these golden feathers or leaves you get two each of an ivory and a rose enamel flower you get four of these fabulous big rose colored orbs of sparkle you've got these fantastic faceted barrels you got these really cool shaped almost like a fan shaped topaz color you've got completely opaque ivory sparkle there as well i adore bicones something absolutely spectacular really beautiful bicones in there as well not to mention almost like a sand dollar effect on the surface of this bead i can't show it to you too closely because the camera will go blurry but they're gorgeous and i love 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 ceramic beads absolutely glorious bead mix for you there let's have a look we've still got loads left as well loads left to play with so let's have a look and see if it's still gem with you yes it's still me what a surprise nobody was more surprised than me sylvia says they might be zebra swallowtails i look forward to seeing photos my lovely very pretty butterflies are my favorite says debbie okay well thank you very very much for hanging out with me my name is gem we are here with jesse james beads today my bead mix of choice today was dogwood blooms can you even see that tell you my eyes getting older and i can't see <laughs> but some of the other bead mixes from this collection are absolutely fabulous the lavender lemonade has got some gorgeous colors in it i look forward to being back with you very very soon funnily enough i think i might just be back with you on If you didn't get that, it's the 4th of May. May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. That's when I am back. And I am going to teach you. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see what we're going to learn together next time around? Maybe just a teeny tiny hint. Just a teeny tiny flash of a hint. Uh, if you know, you know. Teeny tiny flash of a hint. 
That is coming up on May the 4th, right here on Facebook with Jesse James Beads and myself, Jem Hawks. Have yourself a fabulous day, afternoon, evening, morning, whatever it is you're doing. Enjoy it. Stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Bye for now.